What's up, how you doing? Here we are, beautiful day today. Kinda on the hot side, fresh water. Mm. Very hot, not the water, the, the atmosphere. So we have extra virgin olive oil made in California. So uh, I love this uh, olive oil, I've had it before, I highly recommend it. Uh, Cobram, Cobram Estate, first harvest and cold pressed. I always look for uh, first harvest and obviously extra virgin. So today we're going to make some scallops. Have the pan here. I'm going to use an onion, green onions. A little bit of the dill. Very hot, I'm telling you. It's very hot. So we chop up some onions here. You know, I was thinking earlier about my third grade teacher. Third grade teacher. Interesting year that was. Wasn't a fan of hers. I mean, I'm okay with her now. Uh, I don't have her anymore. But what happened was, so we went from second grade, obviously, to third grade. And when we entered uh, second grade, I mean third grade, sorry. It was the same teacher as second grade. I'm like, oh, we already had her. So... And it was the same class. It was kind of like having a duplicate year. And um, so we were there about a week in that class, and it was a good-sized class. A lot of kids in that that uh, that classroom. So after about a week, we started getting used to each other. You know, familiar with all the kids in the class, and. This this uh, new kid shows up. His name was Chris, and he came in with a cast on his on his uh, forearm. I guess he busted the arm or something over the summer. And he came in. He had he had a leather jacket. He was in third grade, but he was like uh, Arthur Fonzarelli. So Fonzarelli comes in, and I remember he was up in the front, giving his teacher the name and all that. And she was checking out on her records. And then he, he sits down, never liked that kid. Was not a fan of his. Um, so, about an hour after that, somebody comes to the front door from the office and says, everybody who whose last name starts with A all the way to M, stand up. So, we stood up, and he said, follow me. So we followed him, and we left our classroom. Little did I know that that was going to be the last time I was going to see that teacher of mine. And he starts bringing us to a part of the school I had never seen before. We go up the stairs, a few flights, and the higher up we went, the uh, the smaller the staircase was becoming. So we got to the top, and he said, uh, "This is going to be a new classroom. This is going to be a new teacher." And and there was a, a young teacher in there, very young. She must have been 24, 25. Could have been younger. Could have been as low as 22. Um, very good looking. And everybody thought she was Linda Carter from Wonder Woman. And they would joke around with her, are you Linda Carter? And then 
eventually she was like, yeah, yeah, I had to go, uh, had to go to Hollywood over the weekend and uh, shoot an episode of the bi of the uh, not Bionic Woman, Wonder Woman, and everybody would giggle and all that. So we were introduced to her, and we were kind of like the castaways of the school. We were away from everyone else, a little special part of the school, way in the top. Guess they had no other classrooms because the classroom in third grade originally was so big that they had to divide it up. So they found her and they brought us up where we were isolated, kind of like the attic of the school, kind of. But what it used to be, that, that school, the building was built uh, in the 1800s, 1880s. And in those days, they used to teach sewing class. So in the back, there was a back room to this room where we would go in the morning and take our jackets off, leave our lunch boxes back there. And if you looked on the side, there was maybe like 15, 20 sewing machines that were just sitting there from the old days. They were like Singer, the kind with the pedal, you know, the kind you'd spin here and then uh, And And uh, so they gave us this old room that used to be a sewing instructor's room. And the good thing about that class was that we were far away from any, any class that she, the teacher, and she was a screamer, uh, she could yell as much as she wanted at us and nobody would know. So, anyway, let me uh, begin the process here first. I have, I have butter, Lewis Road Creamery, New Zealand. From New Zealand. Bring this over here. Put it on position. So, I'm gonna put a little bit of butter and olive oil. So this is, this is melting because I left it out for a couple of hours now. So we'll put a little butter for flavor. Just so we don't need the we eat a little bit of the butter. I don't put the whole thing. So New Zealand butter. Nice, and we add a little bit of olive oil, brand new. Look at that, comes with a uh, sprocket. All right, now, we put the onions. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Um, we got the scallops here. Right there. And I got some clam juice, which I'm going to add. Get the mixing stick. Nice breeze right now. Beautiful. I'm gonna let them saute a little bit longer. So anyway, this uh, this teacher, um, she was all right, but a little bit. Uh, I was not a fan of hers, but 
looking at it back from this point of view, a little bit inexperienced uh, with dealing with children, you know, very aggressive. I mean, if you if you can't handle kids that are in the third grade and you're a teacher, maybe you should do something else for a living. Or maybe you should be like an apprentice teacher for a while. And, and then, you know, pick up some kind of skill, how to be calm. But she was a screamer, constantly yelling. Clam juice, a little bit. Give it a little bit of flavor. Nice. Smells like a restaurant out here. So, one day I was a huge fan of the Six Million Dollar Man. That's been established, there's no doubt about that. Anybody who knew me will tell you, big fan, Six Million Dollar Man. And I found, found on the street one day, kind of like a bracelet. The kind that, oh, not, not exactly the same kind, but similar to the one that Lee Majors would wear on the show back in the early episodes of The Six Million Dollar Man. And I immediately started wearing it. I'm gonna add the, the scallops in here. Oh yeah. Nice. Don't want to overcook scallops or scallops. They become rubbery. So anyway, I started wearing this bracelet in school. Uh, you know, when you're a fan of something, you try and emulate a part of it. it brings you closer to whatever you're a fan of. But this teacher did not like the bracelet. She thought it was beneath me or her class. I don't know if she probably said, what do you find that junk? put on his hand and she kept commenting you know why are you wearing that you know I want to tell is that is this any of your business really why don't you teach your subject and uh, don't worry about my bracelet that I found but anyway she kept making an issue out of it until one day she called my house and she complained about the bracelet that I was wearing in school and You know, my, my father was, and my mother too, they were like, what's the big deal? You know, it was a metal, you know, round. We had to stretch it up, put it back on my, my wrist in order for it to fit. And she did not like it, so she complained. And um, my parents, The following, I mean, I wore that for the entire time I was there. It kept getting on her nerves, I don't know. It's not like I complained about her jewelry. I didn't say, you know, I don't like that, that necklace you're wearing. I want to call up your parents and complain. So, but anyway. The following year, I wore it for the entire year. And the following year, see flies coming, they smell the seafood. They come here, they're gonna get burned. Ooh, where's my flash? Gotta keep doing this now. So the following year, my parents went on vacation. And uh, there was a a fancy jewelry store in the place that they went on vacation. So they went on their own and bought me a bracelet. 
which was not my style. Did not like it. But since it was a gift, what are you going to say? Take it back? I don't want to be rude about it. So I took my, my the one I like, my bracelet, my $6 million man bracelet, when they gave me theirs. And they said, get rid of that one. But this, this is a nicer one for you. They got tired of complaining. And so I took my, my bracelet and I was in a forest area and I threw it in slow motion like the six million dollar man would and I remember watching it spin in the air and I was making the noise in my head that my arm released it and it fell back into the forest and I left. It's probably still there because that forest is still there. And that was, uh, that was a metal bracelet so I'm sure it's probably still there. Unless somebody found it and wore it at school. And then I put their bracelet on, which was just way too fancy for me, wearing this bracelet rattling around my wrist. Uh, and they had they had uh, engraved my name in it, just in case I got lost. Let's say, oh, that's his name. And I wore it for maybe a week, maybe maybe less, maybe less than a week. And then I put it in the drawer where it sits until right I mean it's still there I don't wear it but it's a good memory of why they bought it and by the time they bought me that I was already in another grade I was already in fourth grade and every once in a while my mother will mention uh, she goes remember that teacher you had in the third grade that did not like your bracelet and she uh, co kept complaining about it I go I, re I remember and you know when you get on a teacher's bad side everything you do gets amplified you turn you talk to your neighbor as they say uh, they give you punishment for that I remember they had she had a table in the back that faced the wall and if she caught you doing something that she didn't like she would put you in that table or in that area and you'd sit there and she had a math book and you'd do math problems until she got tired of watching you back there and then she'd send you back to your seat which was usually you'd spend the whole day there and if if I was uh, if I was doing math problems and I came to a page I didn't like I'd rip it out and fold it up into or crunch it up into a ball and stuff it in the cabinet then I'd go on to the next page When they moved that cabinet, they probably said, uh, why are there like 20 pages stuffed in the back of this cabinet all crun crunched up? All right, I think this is close to done. I don't want to overdo it. So, she was young. And I would say there's a 90% chance that uh, she's still alive. Um, I'd like, I, see I can't find her because I only knew her last name back then and that was her maiden name, Maiden Voyage. And I think she got married and the name changed so I have no idea how to look her up. But it'd be interesting, I'd talk to her right now, I'd say, you know what, you a big pain in the ass in those days. You did not like my bracelet. I was only emulating the six million dollar man. I wasn't bothering you with it. And uh, she may say, I don't remember you. Or she may say, what a pain in the ass you were back then. I remember you. But I tell her, if I was a pain in the ass, I was only that way because you annoyed me with the bracelet. We are done. We are done. I'm going to go inside because the flies have sent signals to other flies that there's food here. Although right now I'm okay because the heat is on, but I shut this off and... Alright. I will be back later on. I'm going to go eat my scallops.
That's it for now. Ciao.